And on the breakfast, Chrisland School Lagos breaks silence over sex scandal, which forced government to short all its branches. We will look at the parenting and some perspective on child's upbringing. These things. Also on the breakfast, what's the trust role in stemming the tide of domestic violence in the country? We seek answers from a clergyman. And as always, we'll review the biggest stories making the headlines on the front pages of a national dailies. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Messi Bopo. And it's good to know that you are back at work and uh, the holiday is over. Let's get back to business. Now, and as always, we'll start off with a top trending conversation. This morning, we'll be looking at, uh, on, 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 I mean, on the front burner of uh, top trending, generating conversations, and especially for football lovers and the fans of Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo announced the death of his newborn. And as at last October, he had announced that they were expecting a twin. Unfortunately, one of the babies died and it's a boy. But that has also gotten a lot of football lovers across the entire world and especially fans of Ronaldo um, sending condolence messages and reaching out to him, including his club. I mean, you have the likes of uh, um, Man United also putting out that message and standing with him at this particular time. It's a hard time for them. Uh, a hard time for him as well and also Real Madrid as well putting out that message really really a hard time uh, death but it's okay we'll also send our love and condolences as well you know to Christian Ronaldo um, another issue on top trending this happens with the Nigerian sharing her experience in Tanzania Zanzibar to be exp to be very precise so a certain young I mean the, the story is really lengthy if you ask me it's a lengthy one, but a Nigerian who decided to visit Zanzibar, and of course you know that that's a tourist destination. Uh, you have a lot of people who are trooping, I mean, on year on year on basis, visiting, and just going because of all that they could get. But there's been several reviews as regards uh, Tanzania, right? And so she actually talked about the fact that she was going to be turning 23, and she decided to go on a vacation and taking that holiday to celebrate herself when she turns 23, all the way from, I mean, Lagos, Niger. She got in there, it was really beautiful. And then she met um, some friends, meet some friends. But as time went on, it was time for her after all of the wishes. You know how the bad things can actually be after all of the goodwill messages that actually would come from family, friends, and the new friends that she had met. She, according to her story, she went to bed, she slept, and unfortunately, uh, she woke up in the middle of the night. According to her report, she found that, that there was someone touching some sensitive part of her body, I mean, private part of her body, and she probably thought she was in dreamland, but only for her to wake up to the reality that there was really someone, you know, in her room. And according to um, Zainab, who said that, of course, her hotel room was locked. She turned off the light. She can't really explain and doesn't really understand how all of that happened. And so the story went on from her thinking what would have happened if the young man was going to strangle her. She couldn't even tell. I mean, just imagine yourself in that situation. But the young man or the man himself wasn't speaking English and so Swahili. And then the only card she could play was the HIV card. Maybe, uh, you know, the guy understood what HIV was. She kept on pressing the HIV story until the, uh, the person or the accused here or suspect decided to take a leave and go get um, you know, some safe measures so he can actually come back. Uh, these are all, I mean, one would actually begin to imagine what would you do if you were in such a situation. But according to Zeynep, she decided to, you know, get out of the room, even if she was going to be killed or whatever was going to happen. She decided to go meet some Russian couple that she had met and getting to there, she got some kind of refuge. However, the issue was taken to the police and she reported that for me, it's the fact that she was very, I mean, if you read the story, it's really lengthy. So I'm here just trying to summarize her thoughts. And the uh, issue was reported to the police. Now the police in Tanzania, in Zanzibar, 
uh, according to her, she suspected that the security men were also involved uh, in this situation because at some point she saw the security men before she ran to the Russian couple that she had met during the day. But she couldn't. Her instinct thought that they could also be part of the plot. And then she moved on to getting to the room. She got some refuge and safety until the case was reported. But she also exp uh, explained that um, the way the situation was handled wasn't very professional and wasn't very pleasing as the hotel didn't really pay attention to everything. Now, long and short of the story is the fact that um, it's reported that the security, uh, the security guard is a suspect or is a suspect or was a suspect, you know, in the case, but she said it felt like, you know, religion, whatever it was, um, they had to stand with their own. She didn't really understand, but she captured moments and she captured everything. But let's see if we can, you know, take you through the statement from the hotel. And that has also gotten a lot of people, not necessarily Nigerians, reacting to all of that. Now, the hotel decided to put out a statement recently. It's a popular hotel in Zanzibar where a lot of people would always patronize, especially if you're a tourist. And according to um, this hotel, they've gotten like 4,000 negative reviews, and that's really not good for business. But I'm really going to take you through this part of the comments that was being made by the management of the hotel. He says it is also true because the hotel had to acknowledge the fact that, yes, there was a certain, you know, tourist who visited, you know, the country and, of course, was a guest in their hotel. And all of that was also acknowledged. They also acknowledged the fact that she reported a case of sexual assault or rape, attempted, uh, attempted rape at the time. And there, as, a, uh, as, as an organization or management, decided to report the case. But this is what's getting a lot of people, not just Nigerians, reacting. And I'm sure the reviews would continue for this particular hotel in Zanzibar. It is also true that she reported to our management that a male security personnel who is not our employee was posted at our hotel by a security company and went to her room and attempted to have sexual intercourse with her. So people are reacting. I mean, this has gotten a lot of um, reaction. And not just Nigerians right here, but we have people from different parts. And some people have corroborated the story, saying, hey, it's very, very horrible. We're dealing with a lot. 90%, 95% of what she said is really true because it's really crazy here for us in Tanzania. But I would think that we need to do better. Now, so in the content of um, this post has been put out, the hotel has also been held uh, accountable for this kind of statement, which they think is not good. How do you say that the security personnel that was um, th that's in your hotel was just posted to work in your hotel? So even if you have a company that's hired, a security company that... Uh, you know, you contracted to have provide services for you. It definitely means that they work for you. And so it just shows that uh, the hotel itself is not even acting very responsible, refusing to take responsibility for the actions. I mean, if there was a confession that was made uh, by this suspect, the hotel itself has refused to take responsibility. And also another issue is the issue of attempted to have sexual intercourse with her. That's gotten Nigerians and a lot of people, Africans also talking about the fact that we're talking about a case of attempted rape here. And now you're saying uh, sexual. So it, it, it portrays that Zainab was willing to have a willing, I mean, she conceded to whatever advances it was. So it's not an issue of rape right here. It makes nonsense of all of the issues. And just to bring you up to speed with the fact that Zainab is saying that she decided to take, you know, seek help, probably has gone to rehab. You can only imagine what has happened to this young lady. You can never, never understand it until you are in this uh, kind of situation. But it brings us back to the fact that with all of this that has happened, people say it is Africa. Africa will always be Africa. Uh, you know, the story that you experienced from that Zenith has narrated how the police treated her and to how you know some persons have actually reacted to it is it just shows that it might just be a continental issue let's not even talking about it being a global issue the issue of rape first of all how people would always accuse the victim all the time of a story and how a lot of people would downplay you know the story of the victim and not also listening now one thing that stands out for Zainab is the fact that she was very detailed about every report she put out every receipt from the conversation to everything that she did and we're only praying that you know no one experienced this but it boils down to the fact that as a people as organization we need to do better we also need to constantly do better as a continent 
we cannot constantly, uh, we cannot just allow, you know, some certain culture take um, uh, the front seat. For instance, the issue of rape and, you know, sexual assault always thrives in, in, in the culture of silence. And so silence would always be it. You would always have people wanting to conceal all of this, or uh, all of the experiences that have gone through. But it's, it's, it's a plus for Zainab that she has been able to come out and speak out uh, about her experience. And it is really bad business, you know, for that hotel in Tanzania. We hope to do better. We also hope that everyone also learns that if you are in business, you're not just in business to make the money, but you should also look out for, um, you know, your clients. I mean, the consumers, your customers, that's most important, especially, you know, for a tourist nation. Now, another thing also that several persons have talked about is the fact that we as a country need to do better. You will be tripped at the number of tourist destinations that we do have. How far have the Nigerian government paid attention to, uh, you know, our tourist sites and destinations that we have? Um, tourism. How far have we fed with it? How far have we developed and paid attention to it? But away from that, because we have all the issues that are top trending. And this one is really sad. I feel like a lot has actually happened for us as a country, uh, you know, during this Easter period. So let's even go back to the genesis of it. The genesis of it is that, you know, during this period you have, including my organization, I mean, put out all of the... Uh, uh, which is happy Easter celebration, his reason and all of that. So uh, I will mention, because it's all already in the public domain, so Stelling Bank decided to put out a post to uh, you commemorate and celebrate and also be part of the Easter celebration where uh, everyone is celebrating. Christians, not just in Nigeria, across the entire world are celebrating. And so the post went like, like Agege bread, he rose. Happy Easter. And that got to a lot of people. I mean, you can imagine the reaction. People have reacted and said that this is horrible. As much as you're trying to be very creative, this is really horrible. So yes, following all of this complaint, then you have a response from the, uh, the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria. And they decided to intervene in this particular issue. And here's the letter, selling bang, agege bread, Easter advertisement. Some people are saying, it might just be another shenanigans. How far do we go with all of this? I mean, what will, um, you know, APCON do with this particular case? How much sanction would selling bang get for all of this? Now, so, um, so the letter from APCON reads that, the Advertising Practitioner Council of Nigeria has observed with displeasure the insensitive and pro provocative Easter celebration advertisement by Selling Bank PLC, which compared the restoration of Jesus Christ or Christ with agege bread. The testful advertisement was uh, not submitted to approved exposure by the Advertising Standards Panel. The statutory panel charged with the responsibility of ensuring that advertisement confirmed with the prevailing laws of the Federation, as well as the Code of Ethics of Advertising in Nigeria. And so the Advertising Practitioners Council will take necessary actions to ensure that Stelling Bank's sanction is sanctioned for the exposure of such offensive advertisement according to law, and that no religion, belief, or faith ridiculed or any blasphemy, blasphemous advertisement exposed in any guise. I mean, this is uh, a statement that's been put out following the fact that people have been very displeased. I've seen several comments where people say we are going to withdraw. I have like six accounts with this bank. I'm going to short it all out. Some persons are saying, oh, I was going to open an account, uh, but I'm going to take it out. So a lot of people have been offended by this post. What meant to be good turned out to be very bad. I mean, you know, street partners will say very good don't become very bad. Very fortunate. But the moral of all of this is that we need to be very sensitive as a people. I say that and we cannot overemphasize the fact that we need to be very sensitive. We need to pay attention. The issue of religion is a very sensitive thing, whether you have Christians, whether you have Muslims, whether you have um, Buddhism, whatever it is. We need to be very careful. And for a country as Nigeria, you understand that what further divides us is the issue of um, religion, is the issue of uh, is the issue of culture. But the respect is what we need to understand that we cannot, as, as trying to stay woke in the street patterns again, uh, the word is to stay woke, the word is to catch up with the trend. Everything is not a joke. Just like people would always make nonsense of, um, you know, the issue of rape and those who are going through 
um, some kind of issues, especially rape cases, domestic violence, and all of that. I mean, it's really, really sad. So it, it feels like constantly we're already drifting and we're losing it. What were our values? We just want to make a joke out of anything. We understand that we're, we try to survive. We're happy people. But you also need to understand that there are a lot of people that might be offended by your actions. And so let's be more cautious as a people. Let's be more cautious as an organization. Now, quickly. There's also another one, this is very interesting, away from the bad, you know, not necessarily bad, but not very exciting story. It's the one that there's a video that's making the rounds. Uh, it talks about a teacher uh, that has gone viral over motivational skills. And I'm, I'm sure that we're able to run that particular video right there. It just brings us back to the fact that um, education, as we're evolving, we also need to find ways and means where we evolve as well. It should not be stereotype. Uh, teaching, uh, skills of teaching, uh, skills of, you know, lecturing. We can also devise means where uh, we can get the attention of the people. Let's not forget the attention span of a human being is always limited. You find out that people get easily distracted. E people get less interested in no time. So what would get people more interested? Kudos to the teacher and for what the teacher has done. We, we also encourage that uh, we become more creative, creative in a positive sense and creative in a sense that we get a lot of people get through. And that's it for Top Trending. We'll take a break right now. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the pages of a national dailies. Every